super tech savvy. Okay. All right. So it's February 14th, 2016, and I'm sitting here with Dr. Mark Pilisuk, my mentor. And um, I'm just deciding today that it would be nice to get some questions just about Mark as a person, what kind of got him into doing what he's doing. So maybe you could just start by telling me what led you to on the path of um, what's what your work is, what's important to you. Well, first of all, I want to um, tell you how much I appreciate Susan. Um, she was um, a student of mine at the Saybrook University. courageous and dedicated uh, piece of research dealing with the voices that are often not heard from the Palestinians and the work is good and one of the exciting things about it is that she continues with the work and doesn't just do it and drop it. That's part of been Susan's philosophy, and it's one of the things that we've shared, that, um, that the purpose of academic work is, is um, not to study it just because it's there, but also to study it because there's something that we can do to find out what kind of changes in the physical world, and particularly in the social and economic world, mm -hmm. um, that are in need of change and that we can do something about. So this book is one of a number of books that I've done on, along the way. One book that I um, That I, that I wrote um, had to do with poverty. Another had to do with the fact that uh, people have insufficient ties and connections to other people, to their family, to, the, to their friends and their networks and to the support of agencies that are supposed to help them in times of need. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, this particular book on the hidden structure of violence deals with something that's background to all of our experience. Some people say when they look at, at this, it's, it's hard and it's depressing. But on the other hand, it's like having an illness. Do you want to know about it? Or do you not want to, to know about it? And if it is something that is very difficult to do something about, how do you want to come to peace with that? You want to say, well, okay, I just have my lifetime. I'll do, I'll do things that make me feel all, all right. Um, or is there some way that I want to connect to this larger world where there is so much injustice, it's unbelievable that there are some people who have so much and some who are struggling to have just enough And as they continue to struggle, sometimes together with other people, sometimes by themselves, they go through periods of time where they find the situation getting worse off, even though they're doing all the things that they need to try to improve them. And what's the role for ordinary people? especially for young people now whose the future is yours, what you, what you make of it is what you have to live with. 
So my hope in writing this uh, this book is that um, it would be for young people and would help to make you uncomfortable. And it would also help to give you the question of what you can do with this, that discomfort. How you can live with it, how you can work with other people within it, and hopefully how you can change it. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. So when they start to feel sad as they're reading, what kinds of things can you offer them in terms of advice, if any? Well, one thing is to, uh, is to recall the goodness that you create, that you and your, and your close network create within your life. That um, your employer doesn't tell you that you have to celebrate somebody's birthday or go on a picnic or you do that yourself and that and your community doesn't tell you that you have to go into a program where you're providing opportunities for homeless kids. You do that and you do that with other people and you find ways to enjoy that. You find ways to enjoy the, the joy that you brought to them. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, there's something very successful yourself. It doesn't take away the reality of what's in this book. And my hope is that you will look at that and take it seriously and say, well, okay, I do these things to take care of, to be a good person, to take care of other people, to restore myself, and still, I know that it's not enough. I see how the power, how power and money are organized in society, and I know that something more has to be done. So I want to um, be able to dip back and say that you know I'm I'm a, a better person for knowing that. I'm a person who at least has the possibility of taking part in that change rather than assuming that it's going to take care of, be taken care of by itself. Mm -hmm. And there's something wonderful about that, that you're really, a, you're really a builder of the world, a builder of, of peace, a builder of social connections, and someone who is critical mm -hmm. of what people tell you is the, are the limits of what can be done. Yeah, and don't you think just having this knowledge then informs your decision making just as you make your way through the world? I, th I think it, it does for many people. Mm -hmm. And I hope you find yourselves as one of those people. <laughs> Me too. I mean, it's a, it's a good feeling. It's not the same as pop culture. It's the same as feeling that you're really a part of something that's really bigger and important and will be continuing after you're here. And we'll have your stamp on it. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to say to my students? They're in for a busy semester, and um, part of it is learning what you've written. So. Yeah, well, I would invite. Uh, I'm dealing with an illness now. I don't know how much I can 
communicate, but I would invite any of you to contact me. Yeah. And uh, to the extent that I'm able to, I'll be able to uh, get back and chat with you about what you want to do. Susan is a great mentor, and you're lucky to have her. Mm. Right back at you, Mark. Right. All right. Hey, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.